Hi fellow classmates, this is Kim and Brandy's presentation on theoretical frameworks in qualitative research on our book review. This book was edited by Vincent and Farah Jr. and Norma Mertz. And uh, as you will see as you go through the different video clips through this wonderful blog that Brandy has put together, um, you will get a real sense of how these two editors have, how they see theory um, within qualitative research. And uh, what I'm going to start us off with is the introduction to the book, the introduction and organization of the book. And then as you go back to the blog, you'll be able to pick whatever chapter you're wanting to really go more in depth about with the different theory. Um, the, the book, as the editors wrote it, um, they looked at it as a guidebook into the mysteries of theoretical frameworks and qualitative research. And the reason they uh, began working on this book is they were having trouble finding a theoretical framework and understanding its um, pervasive effects on the process of conducting qualitative research. So through their talking, they decided the goal of the book would be to provide a resource that effectively explains through discussion and example three different points. One being what a theoretical framework is, two, how it is used in qualitative research, and three, the effects it has on the research process. Through this um, book, there's kind of a, a again a three-step process. What is theory? Reviewing the literature that really exists in qual research and then uh, providing all the readers of the book with a definition of theoretical frameworks that is used um, throughout different examples. Each chapter contributes, each chapter's um, editor or author contributes um, a focus on published research studies and addresses where and in what ways that their theoretical framework affected their particular study. The authors provide a discussion and guidelines for um, readers to maximize when they use the book. Going into it, I will tell you that I have found it very useful. I'll give my thumbs up or thumbs down at, in the conclusion part, but I found it very helpful because um, it really helped me get a better understanding of theory and how theoretical framework really does work. Um, it just kind of helps seal in that, research, that process of research. Within the introduction of the book, on Roman numeral pages 18 through 20, they really they give you a really good idea of how they've organized the book, and then they give you each chapter in which particular theoretical framework is explored and highlighted. So if you find yourself leaning towards one type of framework, if you turn to this book, you can go to whichever chapters um, that really work independently of each other, and zero in on a framework that suits what your study is and it'll help you understand it a little bit better. But on introdu introduction on page 18, um, the editors tell us that to allow the reader to compare and contrast responses across chapters, the contributors were asked to address the following items if they were relevant in this particular order. So you know that going through the book you're always going to find this same format. Um, the orders six, piece, six um, areas of the order is one is the overview of the study that formed the basis for the discussion of theoretical framework used including its purpose, research questions, methods employed, findings and conclusions. Next they provide a detailed description of the theoretical frameworks used in the study and the discipline in which um, it originated. The third, uh, then they go into how the researcher found the theoretical framework and what convinced him or her that that was the appropriate framework to use. And then four, what effects the theoretical framework had on the research questions, the design of the study, and the analysis obtained. Five, the other conceptual frameworks considered and why they were not used or discarded. And six, any additional issues the contributors wish to discuss in relation to the use of theory in their research. Again, I found it helpful because sometimes you don't really know what kind of framework is the right one to lean to. And this really does give you a really good idea of the different types of frameworks that are out there 
And then it helps you see the process and why the contributor chose the framework they chose for their particular study. So if you were wanting to just have some guide, guiding posts as to what you are working on, this could really help you. To give you an idea of the theoretical frameworks that were considered, in Chapter 1, it's a theoretical framework of culture. Chapter 2 is transformational learning and adult development. Chapter 3 is the arena model of policy innovation. Chapter 4 and Chapters 5 really are companion chapters, but they look at the, th the theoretical framework of liminality and social identity theory and self-categorization theory. Chapter 6 is chaos and complexity. Chapter 7 is the grief model. Chapter 8 is typology of grid and group. Chapter 9 is, um, I'm not going to say this right, but habitus and field theory. And chapter 10 is the queer legal theory. And then it, it has a conclusion to the book. Um, but it, the book really does um, do a very, very good job in just giving you a really good overview, again, of the of theory and uh, theoretical frameworks, the methodology, uh, and how it all ties together. So it helps you better understand what to choose, how to choose, when to choose, um, and that's how it's set up. The following links on the blog, like I said, will go into particular chapters with our final conclusion at the end. I hope, uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the videos. Signing off.